Tower Defense Simulator over the years has gone from 9 towers in 2019 to the current 44 in 2023. So hey, wanna make a tier list, especially considering the somewhat recent balance changes. We'll be ranking towers from S tier all the way down to F. Let's start with the most recent tower, Alfcam. Overall, this spawn tower is strong early to mid game, with it mainly being hindered by its restriction of 2 per person. This is a big drawback, making it a very situational tower. For that, I have to rate it a B tier tower. Following that, we have Pursuit, a tower unlocked upon reaching level 100. It's got a minigun, rockets, and stun immunity. Like, that's pretty cool. This makes for a good tower in theory, but let's be honest, there's just better options when looking to deal more damage, as well as no hidden detection despite being called Pursuit, which like needs tracking or something, doesn't it? Since it's gotten a good buff recently, I'm placing it in a respectable A tier. Next, let's talk about one of the most underrated towers, Sniper. A tower featuring properties such as hidden detection, shooting leads, as well as great range. This is an amazing tower when starting out and can be used to instantly Though it lacks in late game, for what is basically a starter tower, it is quite good. For these reasons, I'm giving it C tier. Next, Ace Pilot, potentially one of the best towers in the game with its versatility. It has many pros such as cost efficiency and cheap placement, making for a great tower. From providing hidden detection to crowd control, it's a jack of all trades. The only limiting factor is that its effectiveness is dependent on the map you play. For that, I'll not be giving an S tier, but rather a high A, purely because it struggles on straight paths. Following that, we have Shotgunner. Honestly, I hate this tower. It really sucks, considering it costs 2.5k coins and only does the damage of a minigunner, with a quarter of the range. I'd say it needs a slight damage buff, but that might just be me. I personally want to give this a D tier, but if ignoring the coin cost, I'd give it C tier. Next, Paint Boulder. Yeah, insta D tier. I don't want to see complaints in the comment, okay? Next, Medic. Honestly, I don't use this tower a lot, but it can be really useful in hardcore events where the bosses stun your towers every second. So overall, it's a B tier tower, since it's not really used that often outside these cases. Next, Turret. I, I find this tower like really good, especially considering it is free after reaching level 50. With high damage, good range, and hidden detection, this tower is pretty amazing. Although it has high upgrade cost and a limit of 5, I'd say it's better than minigun if you're playing quad up, which most people do. For these reasons, I'm giving an A tier, but I get why you drank it B tier if you play solo. Next, Toxic Minigunner. An event tower from 2021. Personally, my favorite tower design wise. It's more of a support tower with its slowdown effect, as its damage is pretty awful. As much as I'd say it, this is going into C tier simply due to there being better support options. Now, as for a better support tower, we have the event tower Warden. Warden is a melee tower that stuns enemies for up to 2 seconds, so it can really slow down a boss push. It however sucks at crowds with more than 5 enemies, so for that I'm giving it a B tier. Now for an even better, better support tower, we have Sledger. Basically it's Warden, except that it's multiple enemies at once, and somehow even costs less. Boom, B tier too, but like, it's actually above Warden, okay? Okay, so starter towers are kinda boring, right? So let's speedrun the rest. Scout F tier, no reason to use it over Sniper. Demo Man is a good crowd control tower, so C tier. Hunter D tier. It's Sniper but less range and a bit more damage, but it costs coins, like, it really needs a small buff, like it's bad. Soldier C tier. Same as Hunter, it's Sniper, but more damage and half the range. Freezer, like did they remove the ability freeze the development team on reworking this or... Now honestly, it, it makes sense. You need weak support towers so they can be placed for better ones. Overall, D tier. Next up, a spawner tower, Crook Boss. Honestly, it's not that bad, with de it's decent damage, but like, let's be honest, you never use this tower more than like 10 times before replacing it with a better one. I'd say C tier. Following that, we have one of the best towers, Farm. I don't think there's any discussion on why it's good, but there's like a big con to this tower that's not really spoken a lot of, and that's over farming, but yeah, it's tier either way. Next up, we have Militant. It's kind of the forgotten tower of TDS, cause people rarely ever use it. It's just not that great, especially when there's more appealing options like military base. So yeah, I'm giving it C tier. Since we just spoke about it, 
Next, we have Military Base, a great early hidden defense tower. But overall, it's lacking. With a limit of 5 and somewhat weak firepower on modes such as Fallen, it struggles to keep up late game. I'd give it a high C tier, especially when playing game modes such as Squad. Next, Pyromancer. This tower is solid at defense melting and has relatively decent damage as a bonus too. Though it lacks in firepower, the defense melting is a relatively rare feature, thus I'm giving it a respectable B tier. Okay, so Rocketeer is not a tower I've used before, but after getting some opinions, it was a conclusive C tier. This was mainly due to better alternatives such as Mortar and the DPS just not being that great. Like, Rocketeer has 2.1 DPS per 1000, but Mortar has 3.3 per 1000. And what's sad is, Mortar has more range and max damage too. Next, Electroshocker. This tower used to be really bad, but since its recent buff, it's amazing. Dealing basically double the damage and increased max hits as well as max shock time. It has become a reliable support tower now. For these reasons, I have to give it a respectable A tier. Now for an economy tower, Cowboy. I love this tower. Everyone farming with nobody to defend, boom, Cowboy and your economy is fine. This makes farming less desirable and makes for an attractive tower for the early game. Best of all, it's free too, making it obtainable early if you can somehow get carried. I'm giving it A tier, but honestly I can't judge you if you gave it B tier due to there being a golden cowboy. DJ booth in S tier. Upgrade cost reduction and range increases, like why not right? Stonk. As much as I prefer DJ, Commander is a definite S tier too. With it basically being a requirement to beat modes, it's just too good to give up with its multitude of buffs. Now for another recently buffed tower, Mortar. This thing is one, if not the best, crowd control tower right now. Even on single targets, its damage is almost the same as two maxed miniguns, like how is that even balanced? Simply speaking stats wise, this is a definite S tier tower. Now as for minigunner itself, I'd have to say B tier. Sure this is a jack of all trades tower that's really great at molten mode especially, however it has a few drawbacks, namely poor range and somewhat lacking max damage on harder modes. This is however evened out by it having no placement limit, making it great when playing solo. Now for the last cliff tower, Ranger. This used to be a really lackluster aka trash tower before its buff back in December last year. Now with its improved DPS from 59 to 112, it's definitely a tower worth grinding for now if you're starting out, so I'm giving it a solid A tier. Now for one of the least known towers, Accelerator, Insta S tier, who could have guessed, it rarely ever comes up in strategies and is not even that hard to get, right? Crazy. It's one of the best damage dealing towers in the game with reliable range and hidden detection off the bat, like I don't know why it's not spoken of. Next, Commando. Now as I don't own it, it's more of a collective opinion that it's simply not that great. With poor cost efficiency and bad late game damage, it's not that appealing, if ignoring the flex part of it. For this, I'm giving it D tier. Now, as for an event tower I actually own, Archer. This used to be super OP on release with it obliterating crowds, but since then it's been nerfed heavily. Although it has been buffed recently, it's never really gone back to its former glory back in 2019. So I'm giving it a C tier, but honestly I need more testing on this one to be sure. Next up. Swarmer. Again, a tower I don't actually own, but from feedback I received, it's S tier due to a bug increasing its damage, which kind of confuses me, but yeah, take it as you will. Gladiator. I don't own this, but I don't think anyone disagrees on calling it S tier. It's insanely cost efficient and is one of the best early defense towers. Frostblaster. Honestly, it's quite underwhelming, being overshadowed by better support towers such as Sledger, so it just can't compete. For this, I'll have to give it a C tier. Next, Slasher. Sadly, it's the same as for Frostblaster, where it's just left in the shadow of Gladiator. For this, I'll be giving Slasher C tier. Now, Executioner, B tier. This was just from majority agreement, uh, it's just not that great of a tower. Now we've reached Engineer. Surely S tier, right? All those hours were not for nothing, right? Well, I mean, subscribing would not be for nothing. You can always change your mind, and I always try to post high quality content. Even if it takes 30 hours of my life? Wrong. A tier. You've been scammed all this time. Why? 
The turrets just don't get affected by commander's buffs, making accelerator in theory better. Boom. See? 378 DPS for engineer, but 443 DPS for accelerator when using the colder arms buff. What's worse is that the placement limit of engineer is 6, opposed to accelerator's 8. Yikes. In truth, I don't know whether this one deserves S or A tier, so yeah, you, you choose, you know? I kinda ran out of time to do golden towers, so if you can reach like 500 likes, I might do a part 2. See you on the next one.